Welcome back to Shannon Clock. Anyway, let's jump right into this project. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We're trying to make you become DevOps engineers. So let's get to it. This is week one. So you'll be getting two videos from me today and then tomorrow. And so today I will say will be one of the easiest challenges of this whole project. Day one, I'm just getting your feet wet. We're just like, come on, join the challenge. I don't wanna scare you away. So this is very, very simple. Today we're gonna to build a weather dashboard. And this is probably the only project that doesn't touch on using the NBA APIs or any type of sports data. This is going to collect data from the weather app API and then store that data in an S3 bucket. That's literally it. Now, before we get started, there are two things that I need you to have, technically three, but from two different resources. Number one, you need to go to the Open Weather API website. All of that will be linked down below, but it is free and you're going to sign up so that you can get your own access key so that you can get the data from this website. Number two, you're going to need two things from your AWS account. Do not share this with anybody. I know it goes without saying, but use best practices when it comes to security and credentials and all that stuff. But for your, um, for your user account, you're gonna need your access key ID and your secret access key. First things first, we have to just talk about a diagram. Before you start any type of DevOps project or something that you're working on, it's really good to visualize the tools and resources that you're gonna use for this project. So first we're going to initialize and start this process. We're gonna load environment variables and then create a weather dashboard class. This sends a API request. This API request then fetches the data. That data is then transformed and then created into like a data structure. That data structure is then going to be stored in an S3 bucket. And then it stores it as a JSON file inside of our S3 bucket. I feel like that wasn't a lot and I hope it wasn't confusing, but if none of that made sense, that's fine. You're in the right place. We're gonna, we're gonna help you through this. This, like I said, will be one of the few videos that actually explain everything step by step by step. I'm gonna explain why certain aspects are important, like requirement text and dot get ignored, different things like that. The first thing we need to do is set up our project. So. Open up VS Code and let's follow along with me, okay? First things first, I already kind of have a folder called Get You A Job. <laughs> I'm actually gonna move this over because this is a prop and it's not actually connected to anything. Wow. Let's get it with me. Hopefully you have a folder already set up or maybe you even have a virtual environment set up within VS Code, which will probably be even better. My project folder already set up, it's called Get You A Job. First things first, within this folder, of project get you a job. I'm gonna create another folder, Mictor. We're gonna call this, oh, why am I capitalizing? Weather dashboard demo. And as we know, we're going to um, CD our way right into that folder. So we are in the right place. So going forward, just gonna see me enter a bunch of different commands. Essentially all I'm doing is creating the different folders and files that we need within this project. Also, all of these files and everything that you kind of need to do will be on the GitHub after this. So you can follow along or maybe you already did it with the GitHub. I don't want you to just copy and paste. So as you're watching this video, I'm breaking down what different things mean and why it's important feel free to tweak it as much as you want for you. Actually, what I'm gonna do is do all of these commands and then kind of break down what they all mean. So after I have created all these, you'll see that right here, we have created um, our project, right? And so all of the things that I created are now in here. We've got our folders and we have our files. So let me explain what each of these do in case you're new to this. So when we create our source, our little uh, source folder. This is, the source folder directly holds all of our main code. This is Python best practice, right? I'm looking and talking at the same time <laughs> looking at this stuff. Um, our test folder is for unit tests. This is really important for DevOps practices. You need to test a lot of things. Our data folder is for local storage for development testing. And then the init, this one right here, the source init 
makes our directory a Python package. This allows imports between different files, right? I know I'm, I'm giving you some technical jargon, but you're gonna need to learn these things alone. The requirement text is everything that is required to run this project. Um, and then the README just gives a general overview about what this project is about. So these things are empty right now. There's really nothing in them until we fill them, but we just wanted to create our project structure so that you can see what is all, you know, how it should look in MB setup. Moving on, we have to set up our Git repository, right? You should also have a Git, uh, a GitHub account where you can create repos or you can create repositories. A repository basically holds all your project information. It's very important because it tracks changes. Git is very crucial for version tracking. A lot of times when you create different projects, there's gonna be different versions of them, different releases, different everything. So Git is very, very important. Plus it's great for documentation. GitHub was a little bit interesting for me at first. It was kind of hard to understand, but once you have it, and once you use it, it's just repetition. Over time, you'll really, really start to understand it. So just take your time. If you don't know how to clear your terminal, you're gonna hit, for Windows, I can't speak on Macs, I don't know. But for Windows, you're gonna hit CTRL plus the letter L together, and it will clear your terminal when it's getting a little too uh, messy. So now we're going to uh, fill in our structure for our dot get ignore. Dot get ignore basically tells the project what to ignore, what not to track. Dot EMV is to never commit your access keys or anything that is secret and private for security. So as you can see, every time we do something over here, it kind of shows up over here, which Pyash is something we create. Python actually creates these, but we actually don't have to track them. That zip command basically says to exclude anything that's a zip file because those can be, they tend to be very large. So we want to exclude that. Okay, so these three, let me break them down for you both. Very simply, our requirement test, our requirements.txt is like a shopping list for our projects. Bottle three is the AWS SDK for Python. It basically allows us to talk to AWS. Um, Python.env manages our environment variables, which is very, very important. So we have to keep typing them out. And then the request one is so that we can make HTTP requests to the weather API. And um, that version number it just ensures that we have consistent environments. So we are now going to install all of the dependencies that we put in our requirement text, which is what we just did right here. So we put it in there, we didn't actually install it. So to install it, very simple, you're gonna do pip install. And of course I can't spell while I'm typing and talking for some reason. Wirements.txt. I'm pretty sure I spelled it right. Fingers crossed. And we're just going to run it. Ah, this is nice. When you don't see any errors, it's just like, da 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 da. It's, it's, you're having a good day so far. So now we're moving on to our environment setup. This is going to configure our AWS um, credentials, but then it's also going to hold our credentials and our access keys for the weather API website. So you're gonna type this command here, AWS config and enter your credentials when prompted. I already did this, so I'm gonna skip this part. Also, if you decide that you wanna create a video like this, make sure you edit out the part where you're adding your credentials. I feel like it's common kind of knowledge, but sometimes maybe you just need a little reminder. So please do not put that on screen. Also for when you're configuring your AWS configs, the AWS CLI is gonna need four pieces of information. Um, your access key, your secret access key, the region, I would go with US East one, it's the most common. It's also here in Virginia. And then um, the output format, put JSON. This is where you're putting your API key for the weather. Um, oh my, friend. we're also gonna create a bucket name. Your bucket name when it comes to AWS has to be globally unique, meaning you're the only person globally that has that bucket name. Like if anybody else has something, it will let you know. Um, but anyway, for this, I'm gonna put random. So now we're gonna move into the main chunk, which is our Python script. This is the intelligent, the brains of this operation to tell our program what exactly it is we want it to do. So if we come over here to our source folder, inside we have our weather dashboard.py and inside you can see it's empty. This was created in the beginning when we were setting up 
our project structure. So I'm going to paste in my code. So as you can see, this is only 96 lines of code. When I first started out, 10 lines of code made me feel, I was so proud of myself, like 10 lines of code. But most programs, you have thousands upon thousands of code. It kind of, can kind of get intense. But this is our code, okay? So this is what we're going to import and kind of the things that we need. And this part of the code, all of this is just loading in our environmental variables. So we create a class. We have our weather dashboard. Inside, we have our API key, our bucket name, and our S3 client, right? That, that Bodo. <laughs> We're just AWS, right? So this Python code, if you're not very familiar with Python, it can look very daunting. But I promise you, it's straight to the point. Now, a tip I will give you, if you really want this broken down step by step, line by line, which I encourage you, especially if you don't know Python, I want you to copy this script, put it in ChatGPT, Claude, whichever one you like best, and just say, I'm fairly new to uh, Python and coding or programming. Could you please break down and explain this Python script line by line? And it will literally walk you through it as if you were going to basically have this portion of the code that, that creates an S3 bucket if it doesn't already exist. And if you remember, I used portion of the code that said random, like to create a random generated name. So that should work. If we get an error, we're going to debug it together. But this just does all of that. I did put some error handling in here, which I think is very important. The more you learn how to code, it makes more sense. Like if you're going to be programming in your DevOps role, which a lot of people do, I always try to put as much error handling in as you can, because it's going to help you to debug and figure out exactly what is wrong. So for example, right here, everything is good. It's going to print in the terminal. It created our, our bucket with the bucket name. And if we already have one that exists, say you you went through the AWS console and you already created a bucket, it's going to say that bucket already exists. And if it couldn't, we're going to get our error right here. So we're going to know exactly kind of what went wrong and where it went wrong. So here's where we're going to start um, sending those API requests to the website and and getting that data that we want to, to get back, right? So it kind of is self-explanatory. We're just fetching the data. And again, we're going to have that error handling. Then this portion is kind of like exactly what we talked about when I showed you the diagram, but now you're seeing it on the back end with the Python script. So now we're saving it to our S3 bucket um, with our timestamp. It'll have everything. And in the body, which is what we can read, it will be that JSON. And if that works, we'll get in our terminal, it should say um, saved weather data to blah, blah, blah. And then right here, uh, again, this is creating the bucket and list of cities to track. So for here, I have Seattle, New York, San Francisco. Once we run this script and make sure everything kind of makes sense and we don't get any errors, you can always change this up and put Philly, Philly, Philly as you should. Because And then we're going to run it. So this is the entirety of the script kind of broken down to make sense. Also, always save. Always in VS Code, if you'll run into issues like, why is my code not running? You're going to hit CTRLS and make sure you save. I kind of saved it when you were looking. Uh, but right here, it would, so, okay, let me show you what it would look like. If all of a sudden I add a space to my script, you'll see this little white ball up here that means it's not saved. You made a change, it's not going to save. So anything that you do, always hit CTRLS, it will save it, and then you are good to go. This is where the scary part takes place. And it's funny because I already ran through this whole project on my own. And then I'm now I'm doing it again to record it for you. And um, I haven't run it yet. So we're going to run it together and see. <laughs> I pray we don't get any errors because I'm not going to lie to you. It's past midnight. And I don't, I just really don't feel like debugging. But here we go. So usually if you were going to run your script, you would put Python and then the file path name. However, I like to run Ubuntu. I like to run Linux, all that stuff. Um, I use WSL for my terminal. And so I have to use Python 3. You may not have to. This is where research is going to come in. If you're just using a regular terminal, PowerShell, just use Python. Um, if you're using WSL like me, then I'm pretty sure you have to use Python 3. However, play around, see what works for you. So I'm going to put... Um, our Python script. So basically this one right here, right? Look, it's inside a source and I'm just doing 
Uh, actually, I could tab this out. I don't know why I always do that. I just be wasting my own time doing that. But fingers crossed, here we go. It's okay because we put error handedly. So we can see here that we had an error creating the bucket. The specific location constraint is not valid. Main execution failed. All right, this is where we put our good old Googling skills to the point, uh, to practice. But I could kind of see what's going on. I have to fix the, the, the location constraint. So let's fix that. created our S3 bucket, all that good stuff. If we want to double check, what we're going to do is go to our AWS account. And as you can see, we got two buckets. We got the bucket that we just made. This is the one I made before. Um, US East, which is in North Virginia. And we're going to click this. Inside of there, they created a folder for weather data. And then inside of there, we have our JSON files with the data that we pulled and requested using our API. We are actually gonna tear down our S3 buckets now because I don't want you to accumulate any cost. So let's do, so we're gonna do this on the console. So basically, before you are able to delete any type of AWS buckets, you have to empty them first. Bucket, because the longer it's there, the more money it's accumulated. And we don't want you blaming me for nada. So let's delete this one as well. This is also good practice for any time you're doing a project that you don't need to have up and running all the time. Um, definitely tear down your AWS resources or have some type of parameters in place for your budget, like set budget alarms, or you can easily rack up a hundred, few thousand when it comes to AWS or any of them. So we have successfully deleted all of our AWS buckets. So all in all, it worked and it worked fabulously. So the good thing about this is you have now walked through this project and created a successful weather dashboard, right? If you wanted to take it a step further, you can create some visualizations and actually make this into a dashboard that you can see using AWS. And so if you wanna take it a step further, I implore you to do a little bit of Googling, but for now, you are successful. For anybody who is um, intermediate or advanced, this video probably was easy breezy, beautiful cover girl for you. But for anybody else, I know we, we took a form and we kind of gauged where everybody was in their levels. And a lot of people were beginners. So this should be super, super helpful. So thank you so much for coding with me. And also know that tomorrow you'll be really diving in. Now, now we're getting into the weeds. We're getting our hands wet with just being a DevOps engineer. So tomorrow we will be building an NBA player stats pipeline. Uh, the technologies we'll be using is DynamoDB, the NBA APIs, as well as AWS Lambda. So we are really gonna be using our DevOps engineering brains. So it's gonna be really, really fun. But before we do that, make sure that you are hitting that like button, subscribe, so that you are getting the notifications next time that I drop the videos for the upcoming weeks. And then don't forget to follow everybody that's a part of this project. All of the information will literally be in the description box in this video. Follow them so that you are literally getting the notifications when they drop the video. Every video will be dropping around 9 a.m. I don't know if that's CST or EST. I know I'm dropping my video at 9 a.m. EST. So that might be 10 a.m. for you guys. I'm not sure. Um, We'll figure it out. Either way, it'll be dropping in the morning. I'm so glad that you did this with me and I'm proud to see how far you take it. I have some homework for you because I know a lot of you will literally copy this whole thing bar for bar and not learn anything from it. So your homework for this video is to learn how you push your repository, how you push everything that you have on your local machine to your GitHub repo. I'm going to go to bed now. I actually have to stay up and edit and then I'm going to go to bed. But thank you so much for sticking with me. My name is Shay, your cloud techie, and I will see you in the cloud tomorrow for day two of the 30 day DevOps project. Also, hashtag is DevOps All Stars Challenge. If you are doing anything, you want to talk about it, Instagram, uh, TikTok, LinkedIn. I'm I'm tired, y'all. If you post it, make sure you use hashtag DevOps All-Stars Challenge. And I will see y'all tomorrow, for real.